Hey guys, hope you're all well. Today I wanted to come on here and share with you guys my story on how I passed my IELTS and how I passed it in my first try. This has been a requested video. I've gotten a lot of people that have sent me DMs, requested this on other videos that I've created, telling me to share with them how I passed my IELTS. I do get calls and asking like, you know, close friends of mine asking me what I did and how I studied to passing my IELTS. So I thought it would be a good idea to come on here and share with you guys information regarding how I studied for my IELTS and how I did it at the first try. But before I jump into this video, I wanted to just put this out there. First of all, I am not an immigration consultant. I do not work for British Council. This is just what I did personally to making sure that I passed my IELTS exam. So if you want to know how to study and what materials that I used in the whole process, then keep on watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. So guys, as most of you know, I recently moved to Canada and I moved to Canada through the Express Entry program, which is an immigration program that allows you to immigrate to Canada. And one of the first steps that you have to take is writing the English proficiency exam. And the one that I actually chose to do was the IELTS exam. The IELTS stands for the International English test system and that is the one I decided to take. I do know that there are about two types of exams that you can actually take. There's the CELPIP and there's the IELTS test and that was the one I decided to go with. At the time that I did take the test, the test did cost about 75,000 Naira which is about $200 plus if you are converting it to US dollars. And when I was registering for the IELTS, I registered on the British Council website. So before you go and take my word for it, please make sure you do your research as to where you can register for your IELTS. There are lots of scam websites out there trying to take people's money and just, you know, rip them off. So be careful when you are looking for where to register your IELTS. Don't try to cut corners and, and say stuff like, oh, you found a place that is cheaper. IELTS is literally the same price everywhere. So don't be fooled and don't get ripped off. So like I said, do your research, do your research. When it comes to the registration process for IELTS, I'm not going to go into that. The British Council website actually details how you can register for your exam and the ways that you can pay, make payments for your exam. That is not going to be something that I'm going to be covering in this video. IELTS has two types of exams. There's the academic training and the general training. If you're planning on relocating to Canada or planning on taking doing the whole express entry program, then you would want to go for the general training exam because they will not accept the academic training. And most immigration programs usually go for general training for any English proficiency test that you're going to be taking. So that is something that you have to have to note. For the IELTS exam, there are four parts that are covered in the English um, test. There is the speaking, the listening, the reading, and the writing, and you'll be tested in these four areas. If you go on the Canadian immigration website, you would see the different um, grades that are allocated or the different points that are allocated to the different grades that you get in each of these um, four sections. So do your research and go on their website and just make sure that you have that knowledge. So when you're preparing for your exam, you know how much effort you're going to be putting into it because the express entry is a point based program. So you're graded on your English test as well as other areas that you'll be um, getting points for. Now for the test itself, like I said, there are four parts in this um, English exam. There's the listening, the speaking, the reading, and the writing. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the speaking test. So it's divided into two parts. You will do your speaking on a separate day and then on the other days you will do the remaining parts of your exams or the remaining parts of your test. Now in the speaking, you're being tested on your fluency as well as your ability to communicate with another, another person, which would be your instructor that would be grading you on your ability to communicate with her. The speaking is divided into about three parts where you're first tested on simple questions and the questions that they will be asking in this part would be questions like, tell me about your work or if you're in school. Now you want to make sure that you're giving them short answers, but not too short. That doesn't give them an idea to build like a picture because you're communicating with somebody. So you want to make sure that you're not just giving them very short answers. So they would say something like, um, tell me about your work or do you study? And you don't want to say, oh, I work or yes, I study. You want to give 
a lengthier answer such as, oh, I'm currently working, I work as this, and this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. That is a longer answer. So I'll give you an example. Do you work or do you go to school? Oh, I'm currently in school. I'm currently in university studying for my bachelor's degree. I'm currently studying civil engineering and I'm in my third year of studying civil engineering. Um, what the courses that I'm taking, then you can build up on that, but you don't want to make it too long as so the instructor doesn't tell you stop. That's too long of an answer. Basically simple questions in this first round. So you're just going to be answering questions as well as the instructor will be asking you questions. So short answers, but short answers that actually paint a good picture. The second part of the speaking test, they will be giving you one minute to prepare yourself before you're actually going to be speaking for two minutes. In this second part, they're going to give you a topic that you're actually going to talk on. So the topic would be something like, tell me one of the most memorable days that you remember, who was there, why was it memorable for you, and what happened. So you would have one minute to actually frame your answer. They'll give you a pen and a paper so you can write out significant points and you have to touch on all those points that are, that are actually listed on the paper that she's going to give to you. So ask you something like on a memorable day that you remember, you can probably use something that resonates with you and something that's probably true. You don't have to lie because when you're trying to lie, you kind of stutter and stumble over your words. But if you're a good liar, then by all means, go for it. So if it's a memorable day, you can say your birthday, maybe you had a birthday party, who was there, your friends, why was it memorable? Maybe they did a surprise party for you. So that was something that was very unexpected. And remember that you'd be speaking for two minutes. So you wanna make sure that you are speaking not too slowly and not too fast so the instructor can hear what you're saying as well as making sure that you cover that two minutes block. And that is the second part of the speaking. The third part of the speaking will be based off of the second part, which they would ask you questions that you would have to provide answers for, like a birthday celebrated in your country. And do you think it's something that everybody should do or shouldn't do? What are your thoughts on um, special occasions? So relating to the second topic that you were given, they will build up on that in the third Part of it. So when it comes to me practicing for my speaking, it was a bit difficult because I didn't have anybody to practice with. I basically had myself. So what I would do is in the first part, I would read the questions out loud and then I would be saying my answers out loud. And sometimes I would pick up my phone and actually record my answers to see if what I was saying actually didn't make sense or if there were ways that I could actually answer those questions better. And I would do that over and over and over again. In the second part, I would time myself for one minute just to make sure that I was using that one minute to frame my thoughts on the topic that I was being given. And then I would speak for two minutes using my phone to time myself to make sure that I was actually in that two minutes gap. You don't want to speak for a minute and then the instructor beckons on you to say, okay, keep talking. That might just make you feel uncomfortable or destabilized thinking that you haven't said enough and then you might just start tripping over your words. So use a timer on your phone and record yourself to know what you're saying as well as time yourself just to make sure that you're in that two minutes frame. Then when it comes to the third part, I would just answer random questions based off of that and the websites that I used, I'm going to share with you guys later on in this video. The second part of the exam, which is on a later date, mine happened like a week after. So I had time to prepare for the listening, the reading and the writing. When it comes to the listening, they're basically testing on your abilities to pay attention. So I'm going to say this because I say this all the time when I'm talking to my friends that call me or anybody that keeps um, asking questions regarding like, you know, the IELTS exam is if you know that your TV is going to be a distraction to you, read in another room. If your phone is a distractor, keep it far away because you really want to concentrate when you're listening because there are words that you might miss out on and that would affect the grades that you get in your listening. And in the listening, they, what usually happens is that they have like a monologue, a dialogue, as well as other questions that come with mapping, which, which focuses on directions. So in the monologue, obviously one person will be talking and you will be writing your answers. There are certain words that they will spell out for you and you would be able to write out those words because maybe it's 
includes like a name of a street that is spelled differently or somebody's name. So they might spell that out for you, or they would even call out numbers. So your ability to retain that number that they called out and write it out, if that's the answer that you're supposed to be writing in that part is very, very, very important. In the dialogue, you probably have two people talking. And in some cases you would have three people talking and then they would be testing you on what maybe the uh, the first person said the second person said and the third person said and it would come up in like a mix so it's not going to be like oh the first person said this and the second person said that it would be like james john and paul were all uh, they're in a conversation so if james is speaking paul is speaking they'll probably ask you okay what did james say or what did Paul say at this particular time and you have to be able to listen to that dialogue and be able to pick out who said what and what that person said and write the answer at that particular point. This is very important. If you know that you don't, you're not very good with spelling, then it would be a good time to actually start practicing on your spellings because words that are probably are plural and you put a singular form of it will result in you getting no marks. So in a case whereby you have like, let's say cubes and you put cube, that is an automatic fail. If you're not sure of it, or if the word is supposed to have an S, there is something that I did learn, which is putting the S in bracket is that, so instead of saying cubes and writing it like that, I would put cube and put the S in brackets where it's a case of use when applicable, and that will still give you your full mark. But if I put cube when it's supposed to be cubes, then I failed. And if I put cubes with, and it's supposed to be cube, then it's a fail. But if I put it in bracket, then it means use when applicable. And that saved me a whole lot when I was writing my, doing my listening test. Towards the ending of your listening, there is a part where it's like a monologue, but it's very, very fast. So your ability to retain like three or four answers in one go would be tested. So somebody that said that during their listening, the place that they did theirs, it was a case of whereby they had the player and everybody had to listen. So it was not like individual headsets, but when I was doing mine, everybody had like individual headsets and everybody's headsets was working perfectly. So we had no problems with the listening. So I was able to just concentrate. But in that case, in the case whereby everybody is listening to the same player, people might be fidgeting or moving around and that might also cause distraction, but you have to understand that that test, you're still going to be graded on it and you have to pay complete attention when you are doing your listening test. Moving on to the writing, and this is a part that I personally struggled with, but I was actually making sure that I was well prepared. So the writing is there is divided into two parts. There's a part where you're going to write a letter and a part where you're going to be doing an essay. In the letter writing, they can either give you a formal, informal, or semi-formal letter, and we all know what that is. I'm not going to go into details as to what uh, a formal letter is an informal letter is that is where you have to actually go do your research and start reading for your exams because these are things that you need to know but in the letter writing you're meant to write about 150 words and they would give you any scenarios as to okay write to your friend that lives in another country you're moving to that country for three months to work or you're moving for, to that country to actually study and you're looking for a part-time job ask your friend how she can assist you in actually getting a job so you would have to write a letter to your friend and touch on all those points in the letter and make sure that you have a good beginning and a good closing to your letter if it's an informal letter if you're writing to your friend obviously you wouldn't be saying yours sincerely you would probably be signing up with much love or something like that something very formal because that is your friend that you're writing to if you're writing a formal letter then you will need to know how to address a formal letter and how how to close a formal letter. That is a part that you have to go and do that research on yourself. Then in the essay writing, they're going to give you a topic to write on. The essay writing can be a bit tricky if you haven't written essays in a long time, but the resources that I'm going to share with you guys is going to actually help you. In the essay writing, you need to write about 250 words. How I studied for it was with the um, letter writing, I had already gotten very familiar with writing letters and I was just writing just to make sure that I was getting a hang of writing. And if you have a bad handwriting, 
this is the time that you literally go and buy those ABCD books and start learning how to write because one of the reasons why people would see low grades in their writing and all the other parts of the English test seems to be all right but their writing wasn't so good it might just be your handwriting you want to make sure that your letter is written properly so your T is your T and your T doesn't look like an I or a J or something like that if your handwriting is funny then you need to start working on it personally when I was taking the exam I made sure that I used a pencil just in case that I in case I would make a mistake I would be able to go in with an eraser and erase it and write my words properly I didn't want a situation where I was using a pen and if I had to have to cross out something I would cross it out and it would look messy and maybe affect other words that I was going to write in the long run so I did write with a pencil would encourage you guys to actually use a pencil in case your handwriting isn't so great I literally took my time to write individually just to make sure that whoever was reading it would be able to read what I was writing. Another thing that I did was that because we have smartphones right now where we type in a really, really bad way, we write because as cause, or we just don't even put full stops and commas and punctuations. We don't even punctuate properly. I looked for an app which is called Grammarly and I installed it on my laptop. You can install it on your phone and what it does is that as you're typing, it will tell you where you need to put your punctuations and that also helped me when I was writing. Um, um, preparing for my writing um, exam. Another thing that I did was I would write a letter on a book and what I would do is I would take a letter that I'd written and type it out on my laptop and then I would see places like you know where I could change the words because they want to also test your variety of word usage so you're not going to use and, 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 and. There are other words that can substitute if you read the sentence or places where you can actually change the sentence. And since this was still the earlier stages before I was about to take the exam, I had the time to actually go back and reword it. And that helped me build on my knowledge that, okay, instead of, if this is what I'm trying to say, then I can actually phrase it in this way so it gives a better flow. Another thing that I did while typing out was that it helped me understand if I was getting to 150 words or exceeding. Now if they tell you to write 150 words you're not just going to be writing 150 words. You can write 170, 180 but don't make it too long where the person gets tired because you want to keep it in a fine, a fine mix between 150 plus but you definitely definitely don't want to write less than 150 that is one thing that you need to know and that is the same thing that i did with the sa2 i made sure that i was writing 250 or more and when you look at it 150 words actually isn't a lot you just have to know the right words that you're using another important thing that you need to know is that you have to be able to create simple sentences and complex sentences short sentences longer sentences too you also have to make sure that you have the right punctuation and the sentences make sense now the last part which is the reading the reading is not the hardest part because when you look at it they give you like about three different essays to read now if you think that you're going to have the time to actually read everything and then start looking for your answers then you are going to be wasting a lot of time and the time that is given for your reading might not be enough there are strategies that i'm going to share with you in terms of reading which is you can scheme through the questions and look for words that you feel might come out and look for them in that paragraph to start finding your answers. So you don't have to necessarily read the whole um, article that's given to you. You can look for words that are given in the questions and then start to look for those words there in your essay to find where your answers might be and maybe you'll read that sentence or read that paragraph to find your answers that you need to put out in your reading. Another thing that I struggled with so much was the true, false and not given. That can be a bit tricky because there are certain things that you might read and you'll be like, this is definitely false. It wasn't said there. But when you go back and read your answers, you'll be like, it kind of was. So if you're not sure, I would advise that you always go back and read the strategies and make sure that you're getting it right and do it again one or two times just to make sure you get the hang of it. The truth, false and not given was the hardest part for me. Okay, I think I've shared enough with like the different sections in the IELTS. Now I'm going to share with you guys the materials that I actually used in reading. The first one that I used in reading is the IELTS Buddy. Now anybody that probably has studied for IELTS or is currently studying for IELTS and you've come across IELTS Buddy, then this is what I'm going to tell you. IELTS Buddy 
strategy should not be taken for granted. If you want to learn about the strategies and how to tackle each of those sections or each of those each of the sections in the IELTS, then IELTS Buddy should be your best friend. One of the things that you will notice with the website is that it's a bit complex and it's very it's not easy to navigate through, but you have to you have to get a lot of patience when you're using IELTS Buddy because the strategies there I haven't seen any other website that will deliver the strategies that IELTS Buddy actually delivered for me. And in cases like the reading where I was studying for the true false not given, when I would do a reading paragraph and I would feel like places in the true force not given. I would go back to IELTS Buddy and read the strategies on how to answer questions on true false not given and go back and see if I if the answers that I actually had picked actually made sense and if I was actually, actually wrong in the first place. And that will allow me to like, you know, open up my mind and be able to tackle better questions in the future. So IELTS Buddy is your best friend. It will teach you how to skim through articles and read fast. It will teach you how to write and it will teach you on things that you should be um, preparing yourself for when it comes to your speaking, when it comes to your listening, and when it comes to the whole section. Everything that you need to know about general training and even academic training Training is on that IELTS Buddy website. So make that your companion. The second website that I actually used is the IELTS online test. This website was also very good. It has lots of modules that you can go through from the listening to the speaking, to the reading, to the writing. It would even show you people that, that have done like similar writing and how, what they scored in IELTS. Like they got a band nine for that, or they got an eight or they got a seven. Only advice is that don't look at anybody that got a seven. Always look for somebody that wrote to a band eight or a band nine. And that is something that you should try to emulate. And what, one of the things that I like that website for is that the reading, it Will tell you like how many minutes is given for the reading so you have about 40 minutes so it's 40 minutes that it's going to time you on and then you go through the questions just like the real life situation that you'll be encountering and they had lots and lots of modules to go through and practice with after exhausting that website um, right now I think they've updated it with more questions and more more tests for people to try I would go to YouTube and I used YouTube a lot for my speaking because because I was practicing by myself and I didn't have anybody to practice with or to critique um, what I was saying I would go to YouTube and somebody that was studying for like a band nine in their speaking and the kind of answers that he would give based on the questions there was a particular video and I'm going to link it down below so you guys have all the resources that you need in terms of like the speaking but by all means do extensive research for yourself there's a lady and a guy and the lady would ask the questions and the guy would answer the give the answers Back, and that was like a band nine speaking and that really helped me in how I was you know speaking even though I was speaking to myself and recording myself to see if my answers made sense after exhausting all the listening content on both um, IELTS body and the online test I went to YouTube for listening and what I would do is actually play YouTube videos um, that had like IELTS um, tests on it and just practice and practice and practice. These are the resources that I used when reading for my IELTS test. I will be putting links for all of them that I've mentioned in this video. So if you want to go check them out, then by all means do. But one of the things that I'm going to say before I end this video is this. When I was reading for my IELTS test, I studied for about a month and I was putting in about an hour or two on a daily basis. I didn't study during the weekend because I wanted to have time to do other stuff. But one of the things that I would I encourage you to do is don't say oh I'm gonna study for the exam I'm going to use this, this whole week to do my listening next week I'll do my reading next week I'll do this by the time you come back you realize that you've forgotten everything about the listening and by the time you get to the reading you're like um, I don't really understand what I'm doing here I built a timetable for myself and what I would do is I would try to cover two topics a day so Monday it will probably be listening and writing Tuesday would be speaking and reading. Wednesday, listening and writing like that. I did that constantly back to back because what I studied on Monday, if I'm touching it on Wednesday again, then it's fresh in my mind. Then I retained the information quickly and faster and I was able to absorb all of that then took the exam. So yeah, I've been chatting for so long. Um, I hope this was 
really, really helpful. I've been able to help a couple of people with the, this information personally, and I was so happy to see their results. I'm so glad they all passed their IELTS exams. And so I hope this also helps you guys when you guys are preparing for your IELTS exam. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe. I will be sharing other information regarding like, you know, Canada and all of that good stuff. But don't forget that my channel is more lifestyle, makeup, beauty, and all of that stuff. But I wanted to put this information out there just to make sure that you guys have this information and all the people that have been requested for this video also get the right resources that they need. And until next time, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.